We're monitoring that situation very carefully. We have put together a range of contingency plans. Uh, we have communicated in no uncertain terms with every player in the region that that's a red line for us and that there would be enormous consequences if we start seeing movement on the chemical weapons front uh, or the use of chemical weapons. That would, uh, that would change my calculations uh, significantly. All right, that was the president back in 2012 making his infamous red line comment. But when Bashir al-Assad crossed that line, the president did nothing. No wonder Vladimir Putin and others feel like they can walk all over the United States. Here with reaction, Fox News strategic analyst, Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters, Fox News military analyst, Colonel David Hunt. Colonel Peters, let me, let me start with you. I mean, they want Assad to stay in power. They're bombing areas where there's not a high concentration of ISIS. It seems like they're there to protect... Uh, protect Assad and in the meantime then they're lecturing America demanding our warplanes leave how would you handle well, this well the first thing I do is make sure that our pilots have rational rules of engagement have air-to-air -air missiles on their aircraft over Syria so they can defend themselves and at the presser today at the Pentagon the journalists should have asked have our rules of engagement changed? Have we made them stricter? Can our pilots defend themselves? Because, Sean, I am very worried about Putin shooting down a U.S. drone or a manned aircraft or an allied aircraft and saying, oh, well, it was just an accident and Obama doing nothing in response, which would be beyond humiliation. But Putin is out. He, Putin's not satisfied with defeating an enemy. He has to humiliate and destroy the enemy. He's humiliating Obama, and he wants to humiliate the United States and our military. Colonel Hunt? Yeah, we, the, a couple of things here. We, we've had 7,100 mission, air missions since we started this very futile campaign in Iraq and a little bit in Syria. Uh, it, it has, it's just not working. Part of it's what Ralph referred to. Well, American planes fly, but unless there's an American on a radio on the ground, they're not dropping ordnance. So we would have planes come back with almost all their bombs still on them. Yeah. And the Russians have been involved in Syria for 45, 45 years. Uh, we don't know where they're bombing. It's very, very dangerous. And I, the all policy right. we've had now and the millions of dollars we spent, it hasn't worked. Let me play for both of you comments that David Cameron made, the prime minister of, of Great Britain, and compare it to Obama's comments about Islam and get your reaction. Watch this. Barack, you said, and you're quite right, that every religion has its extremists. But we have to be frank that the biggest problem we have today is the Islamist extremist violence that has given birth to ISIL, to Al-Shabaab, to Al-Nusra, Al Al-Qaeda, Al and so many other groups. Now, these people claim to act in the name of the Islamic religion. The United States is not and will never be at war with Islam. And I'm also proud to carry with me the goodwill of the American people and a greeting of peace from Muslim communities in my country. Assalamu alaikum. Islam is not part of the problem in combating violent extremism. It is an important part of promoting peace. And I can go on and on. Uh, 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 Colonel Peters, how is it he can't do what Cameron's doing and, and identify the obvious? because well, he's a prisoner of the ideology he learned as a teenager. I mean, Obama, after almost seven years in office, after all these world crises, after disaster, after self-inflicted disaster, Obama's worldview is still that of a, a, a narrow-shouldered, bespectacled, uh, pimple-faced undergraduate at the University of California, Santa Cruz. He's learned nothing. Well, let me use a better analogy. This... Our, oh, we don't have a president. We don't have one. We have a scared kid in a horror movie covering his eyes from the world. <laughs> I, it's sad, but it's just sad. Colonel Hunt, last word. Yeah, the other part of the problem, of course, Islam is part of the problem, radical, is, radical Islam, but that the other part of the problem is that state sponsorship like Qatar and Syria, the, it was the money that fueled ISIS. So, yeah, there's a religious issue, but it's also still state-sponsored terrorism. We've got to go after both. All right, guys, thank you both. Coming up, the war of words between Donald Trump and Senator Marco Rubio continues. Who's coming out on top? And that's coming up next, then also later tonight. I think uh, American blacks over the course of this next year will begin to see that they've been manipulated. Dr. Ben Carson taking heed for his recent comments about race in America. We'll debate and discuss that and more straight ahead.